All right, how you guys doing today? Hopefully there's no interfere. You got this live. We have a live today with guest Eric Cologne. And we're gonna be interviewing Hudo Moses today. Gonna wait till they join in. I started a little bit early, a few minutes early. Yeah. Just making sure everything goes okay. We're gonna be talking a little bit about Hudo today. It's been a request from a lot of you. Let's see. Just waiting for them to come in. Now, all I ask is for you guys to be respectful. If there's something you guys do not agree with, keep it to yourself. We do these things to bring a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of awareness. Thank you. Same to you. Malekum Bakwenda and Sara. Lembo con Lembo and Sara Malembo. Um, let me see something here. I'm going to invite... Just got to wait till they come in. Sometimes it takes a while for them to get a notification. Assalamu alaikum to all the God children. There you go, I'm gonna bring. And I'm waiting for Guru Moses to join. Hey. Hey, there's Eric. Hey, Salah, how are you? you? Hey, you're going with that, man. In the back. I'm getting the back. <laughs> Go in the back. So we're just waiting for um, Moses, who the Moses, to join. Hopefully he got the uh, text. I text him. Sweet, sweet, going sweet. Live. If it's not, it's going to be just you and me. So I do apologize. I, I didn't realize that you were right, an so. hour ahead of us. I'm actually, yeah. I'm actually an hour ahead of him. I was in yeah. uh, Denver. Okay. So. <laughs> Good. Man, sure. you been? Keeping you awake. I'm no, not going to no, make no, you I'm fresh for the car. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> you got to go down <laughs> to the pot, man. That pot will keep you awake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm just, you know, I'm just here, just sitting quiet. The dog is resting. So that's a good thing. Okay. I don't see him on, so I hope he did not forget. Oh, okay. I did message okay. him. But I know he's a very forgetful person. If not, it'll oh, be as you are. Great. <laughs> the guy's got a controversy already <laughs> as it is, right? <laughs> so everybody that is watching should uh, have an idea of who uh, Tata Eric Colon is. Um, he is known um, in the Palo community. Unless you want to introduce and say a little bit of yourself before, um, yeah, uh, you know, I, we get I have uh, I have uh, twenty one years of Palo practice as a practitioner and as a as a Tata and Kisi. Um, I also have a, a sixteen years of Orisha made. Um, I don't know, forty six years of practicing Cardassian spiritism since I was a child. So. You know, um, I don't consider myself well-versed. I just consider myself a lucky student that I have had some years on me. <laughs> but, but you do have uh, an extensive library of, of knowledge that I, I, I have try, to give I try. to you, right? And I know you don't come out, out there saying, you know, I have respect for this person, but when it comes to Eric, and I've spoken to Eric and many times on the phone, you know, a personal thing, and this man is an encyclopedia when it comes to uh, Palo and 
when it comes to diverse uh, traditions. And I'm like, I don't know how he does it, but the man is like, if, um, and he's friendly. I try. I mean, sometimes. <laughs> I try. I try when, uh, when people, depends, when people right? on my nice, on my good me. side, it's good. But when people want to be on my bad side, it's all bad. <laughs> So far, I've asked him so many questions, and to this day, there's not a question that he hasn't been um, able to answer. So again, guys, he's a, an encyclopedia of knowledge. So if you know, if you are looking to understand Paulo, if you guys are looking to interview somebody in Paulo, I will always no, suggest thank you. I mean, that's thank you, thank you. knowledge. I hope he didn't forget. Let me see if my wife could text him. Yeah. I know my wife yeah. is here texting that. We are waiting for yeah. I know he was on here. He was oh, doing he, a live. He was doing a live earlier? earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think it was today or yesterday. I get, I, I'm so busy. Yeah, I yeah. Get this. No, I totally get it. I totally get it. You yeah, yeah. I live in uh, Dunmore, Pennsylvania, which is a borough of Scranton. So, so yeah. I live in Pennsylvania now. I like it. Mm. It's cold, but I like it. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I hope he comes in because now he's beginning to worry me because he's the main guy that we're into. Hope he didn't well, get cold feet, <laughs> Moses. <laughs> he's like they're gonna attack me left no, and right and ask Oh me no, no, questions. no! I think I think you know the the topic needed to be brought up because I think um, there's just. I, I want to say misinformation. I also think there's a lot of confusion with, with 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 a lot of this new this new understanding that's coming out with everyone being a hoodoo priest now. Um, everybody jumping out of the woodwork. Before you never heard anybody claiming any of this stuff, and now you have priests that are dime a dozen. It's kind of like when Palo came into the scene and everybody became a palero and person had like maybe six months of Palo initiates initiated and then Orisha priest the same thing like you know everybody you know they jump on these fads like if it's supposed to be a fad but it's really a practice you know but you can't control that right I I think it's do a lot more because of the uh, due to the internet and content and they go out there, read something, or they, they uh, want to put content. Not everyone. There's a lot of knowledgeable people out there, but a lot of people that I've seen, it's just like, I feel mm -hmm. bad for yeah, I'm like, that's really confusing. If you were confused and then you follow the, those type of people, right? Um, I feel like they're going to mm -hmm. be worse than they were before. I, I'm a content creator but i stay within my limits i don't expose secrets out there and i also talk about my lineage and in some of the videos i have mentioned you and i said well his lineage is different right when you go and do initiation your initiation style or the process is going to be way different yeah. than ours because every tribe every house has a different yeah definitely definitely i think you know People don't realize that you know um, there's always there's always this understanding yes. of 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 Palo you know yeah maybe people invite certain people to give witness to certain ceremonies but in all actuality the, the houses back in the back in the days never never kind of crossed each other in in ceremony um, mostly. They, they pretty much kept to themselves unless they were doing festivals or, or playing to the Nganga or things of that nature and they allowed other Munansos or other houses to come in and it was kind of formulated as a Yimbula, you know? Oh! There you go. He's coming in. There's, There's the guy. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I was, That's like, I was the, getting cold. It didn't the show me that you were alive for some reason, but here I am. Hey, hey dude. That's the fabulous beard there. It's Don't worry, thank fabulous. You. Thank you. Been, thank you. I've been. I was. Uh, I gotta start going <laughs> lines, man. I, I'm jealous there. I, I gotta start. 
more, more, more knowledgeable. The beer man. I don't makes say as much. I let the beer talk yeah. for me most that's, of the time now, how, and it's a great it. strategy. That is how you do it. This is how you do it. So yeah. So I guess. Right. So later. No, no, no. Go so, ahead. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead, go ahead Eric. Sorry. So, guys, those who are on, uh, I want to start with a quick disclaimer. Um, everything that is said, said here is personal knowledge. Uh, there might be some things that you might agree with that I say or any of the people say here, but remember that's a personal knowledge, personal experience. We don't claim to know everything. We are coming here to, mm -hmm. to give you a little bit of something, uh, a little taste of something. Well, in my case, I don't claim to know everything. I don't know about if Eric, if he, I mean, I say he's <laughs> encyclopedia. And I read a lot of uh, Buddha's Moses uh, posts, and the guy is, you know, puts a lot of good knowledge up there. So without any further ado, let our guest introduce uh, himself. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me on. Uh, my name is Moses. Uh, the Hoodoo Moses thing is a funny thing, how that ended up being my name. Hoodoo is the work I do, among other works I do. But uh, Brother Moses was taken when I signed up for Instagram. <laughs> So I was like, oh, shit, fuck, I guess Hoodoo Moses, maybe? And I didn't, like, you know, I, I never used Instagram before. I didn't know it was a big thing. So now it's like a whole thing. But, yeah, luckily it sounds all right. Well, it's thank you guys for having me. Um, you know, I, uh, I appreciate being in, in discussions about history, and I appreciate being in discussions about um, that appreciate nuance. And I know both of you uh, from our conversations before to be, in, you know, interested in history and appreciate nuance. So it's a beautiful day. Okay. And let me ask you, and mm. I ask everyone this same question. How did you receive that calling? Mm. Were you born into the tradition? Did you get like a so, oh, moment? For me, uh, everything, I, including did, falling into hoodoo, like, it's just synchronicity, one thing after the next. Like, in terms of a spiritual calling, I was certainly born spiritually inclined as far back as I can remember. My mom remembers me being a little kid telling her I wanted to be a hermit. I wanted to be a hermit. Um, and, yeah, I was always very spiritually inclined. And then when I was 14, I got hit by a truck. I got had, like, a near-death experience. And that really kicked things off to the next level. Um but in terms of who, so always I was kind of between worlds a little bit and sort of seeing things not the way that they're conventionally portrayed. Playing with little, you know, trying to make it snow the night before a test and things like that. And, you know, seeing, seeing some interesting things, seeing some interesting things and just situations, luck, different things with luck. But the luck led me, I, be, I became interested in this stuff and I started like, even as a kid going to the public library and trying to learn about magic, uh, particularly I was interested in voodoo dolls as a little kid. I mean, like eight, nine, 10 years old. And it doesn't take long of like actually trying to look in books. I was a pretty, pretty good reader for a little kid to see like, oh, that's something different. That's actually has nothing to do with Haiti. That's like, that's a hoodoo thing. It's a New Orleans thing. And mm -hmm. so it was interesting to just have that little flavor in my brain. But growing up in Jersey, um, you know, I lived in a really diverse place. Like I, I encountered a lot, a lot, a lot of cultures. I think my Essex County is like the most diverse, won some award from the president for being like the most diverse county or some something like that, like very diverse. Uh, so I was seeing a lot of different cultures and stuff, always very spiritually and religiously inclined. But then when I first went to college, I went to Rutgers and um, I didn't go to class really. I just, I had a friend who worked at an all night newsstand down there and I hung out at the newsstand and you know it was the only place in town open all night and there was this guy Willie old man Willie they called him and when Willie came in I mm. had to get up I he had two milk crates with like um one of those like uh, cushion seat cushion things and I sat on the milk crates but then when Willie came in I stood up and it ha happened on and on it was it was strange to me that my boy Jay who like I knew from like punk rock shows and stuff he was entertaining Willie, like I had a friendship. Willie would hang for like an hour and a half and just talk. Mm. And it came to be sooner than later. Jay was reading about, about Freemasonry. Willie was a Mason. I started talking this, that, and the other. Eventually, Jay was like, you know, Willie's a conjurer. 
And I, I didn't even know if I believed in that kind of thing. And I was like, what do you mean? Uh, Willie started teaching us, you know, take a string, tie, you know, tie a knot, to trick, tricks where you tie a knot, tricks where you write someone's name on a piece of gum, stuff that like now I know, you know, from my research since then, you know, it was pretty, you know, 1960s, 1970s, 1950s conjure, big time. Um, and that was hugely impactful to me, just like knowing Willie, he, he was always coming in and how I met this character is he would come in every night looking, he would buy all the uh, silver change and the change cup. It was like people would leave J tips, you know what I mean? And so Willie would come in with dollar bills and he would buy like, you know, a hundred dollars worth of change. This guy would work long shifts. He'd have a lot of change. And I was like, what's the, only the dimes though, not the quarters. And I was like, what's the deal with this guy? He's coming in here like he wants dimes. Who the, who the hell wants dimes? Everyone trades their dimes to you to get dollars. And he goes, I don't know. Willie's looking for some kind of special dime. Naturally, it was a mercury dime. I now I now know a mercury dime, um, <laughs> and that's where I started. To, like just from these like natural conversations. So then when Jay was like, "Willie's a conjurer," he started like talking to us about shit, and I was like interested. And I never he never gave me lessons. He's not my godfather. Nothing like nothing official. Just hanging out. You know what I mean? Drinking fucking quarter waters and listening to this dude talk. Um, at one point. point Jay was like, you know, he's Jewish. And Willie was like, you're Jewish? And I was like, oh, fuck. Because I'd, I'd have enough interaction with, like, five percenters and many members of the black spiritual community to be like, oh, fuck, here it comes. He goes, you're Jewish? And I go, yeah. And he goes, you circumcised? And I go, yeah. And he goes, all right, well, then I can tell you. And that was kind of it. That was like, like, he wouldn't, I feel like if I had a different answer, I either would have heard different stuff from him or I wouldn't need an initiation or something. But he was like, that then he was like, all right, cool. I, then then we're like brothers, and I can tell you this stuff. Um, and yeah, and he just he, he he told me a lot of stuff. That so also in my like upbringing, I was my parents wanted me to be a rabbi, so I was raised in like a pre rabbinic program. We st I went to school from eight thirty in the morning to four thirty in the afternoon. I had all the like normal English subjects, and then I had Hebrew and Torah, rabbinics, Jewish history all this shit, all, all taught in Hebrew. Um, so I was, I've been like, basically you didn't have a life. Job. No, no, I learned, I study Bible. Like that's, I study Torah, man. That's what I did. Um, <laughs> oh, I mean, that I was your Nintendo. Had, your well, I got arrested for computer Atari hacking when I was 14 too. So I definitely had other interests, man. Like I was definitely, um, <laughs> but, but so, um, yeah, I was, running around the streets a little bit as a result of, of being bored doing this stuff. <laughs> In any case, um, I, had, I had sort of this deep knowledge of like the lore, not only the scripture, but the lore about the scripture. And then here I was hearing this dude who was like saying stuff that was just like a slightly different angle of shit that I had heard. Um, the, the like classic example that still like it was just New Year's, right? Everyone's eating Hoppin' John. Willie was from yeah. South Carolina, by the way. Um, so Hop and John's a big mm. thing in South Carolina. My family on, on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, we have black eyed peas and greens and caress every year as we have been for fucking 2000 years, because that's, then you also have a ram's head on the table. You also have, um, you say lungs, now we use marshmallows. Yeah. You have different things and they're all symbolic yeah. and it symbolizes the same thing. The, the black eyed peas and the, and the collards is, mm -hmm. you know, that's what we, we eat it for prosperity on Jewish new year. But so anyway, so here I had Willie like saying this stuff to me and I was like, like I recognize it, but it's like a different flavor or something. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's the same, it's the same meat, but just yeah. like a different spice on it. Yeah. And so, that changed the course of me going to, I was going to school to be like a labor lawyer or whatever. And I, I stopped, I went to study cultural anthropology, uh, diasporic traditions was like my focus. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how I just kept trying to meet people who knew a thing or two and add that all up. And that's how I got to conjuring <laughs> long story yeah. to, to say nothing. <laughs> well, <coughs> everybody starts somewhere. You know, I had a story how I started. Pretty sure Eric has a story on how he started. We, at the end of the day, you know, everybody receives a calling, sometimes mm. in the most weird way, right? And it changes their life. It changes 
everything about the person. But I think it's also a way to help others, right? And that's why we're here, to give mm. a little bit of something back to the community knowledge. Uh, and you're going to get tagged in, but no, I'm not no. today. Yes, sir. You're so. not gonna. <laughs> so you know, so you know, like my my conversation with you about um, the premise of hoodoo, right, and where it came from, and yeah. and how it came to be, and 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 everything. That I wanted to touch up on that a little bit. Um, first off, from from an anthropological view versus yeah. the mainstream. Yeah, like that's the thing I could tell. I could tell what most people think. I can tell what I heard as a hoodoo man, and then uh -huh. I can tell what I would find as an anthropologist. And there are exactly. So I rather deal from that perspective just for the moment. Yeah, because we'll get to the broader picture as as we keep expanding on the on the conversation. So yeah, I mean, hoodoo comes to be informally in America. And, you know, one of the distinctions we find between the, the, because obviously a lot of the same conditions led to hoodoo and Palo and Obia and or Candomblé Risha and, and everything yeah. Risha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, so many of the basic conditions, right? Yeah. You have mm -hmm. multiple mixing of African cultures out of their basic location. They don't have the, the same plants, same animals, anything. Exactly. There is some yeah. indigenous population there or different indigenous populations there. And there's a colonial power influencing things in a variety of ways. So exactly. one of the big differences with hoodoo is this was a Protestant colonial power as opposed to a Catholic colonial power. Mm -hmm. And so the way that mm. the, the Protestants approach to worship met with the African approaches to worship was a little different. Like in Catholicism, because there was like the Spanish kind of knew about saints, you know, saints, yeah. saints mm -hmm. had their own cults. It was very easy for that. The Protestants were like, they didn't even like this, the Catholics having saints. So certainly they weren't going to tolerate the Africans having saints, right? Exactly. So it, it, the, the pressures that shaped it, and it's just one of many, many, many examples, were a little different, and therefore it comes out a little different. But you have a lot of the same ingredients going into the recipe, and mm -hmm. then some different ingredients that are, you know, specifically North American, nor indigenous North American Indians, I just mm -hmm. posted an article in my stories last night. It's probably still up there. But due to some kind of weird circumstance, they ended up excavating colonial graves. So 1700s mm -hmm. gra graves of slaves in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And they found mm -hmm. that of 12 of them, one of them was already 50%, uh, more than 50% Indigenous American. Mm -hmm. So first of all, and this is just, just hit the news yesterday. So first of all, mm -hmm. this is, you know, we know for sure, and as I recently been posting, the, the idea, the construction, the racial construction of black was pretty extensive at the time. And yes. that this led to admixture. And it's different everywhere. It's different in Jamaica from how it is in America. And that America wasn't America then. That Louisiana was France. Mm -hmm. Florida was Spain. And north of there, Georgia is, a, is America. It was, you know, Britain and then America. Exactly. From so into this <sighs> comes the African traditions the mixtures of traditions of what is considered, you know, the conquered people, the servile peoples. Mm -hmm. And hoodoo is the, hoodoo is when you take all those different strange, because America's a big, Cuba's pretty little compared to America. You exactly. know, you think of how much variety you have, even in Cuba, mm -hmm. there's so much variety when you're talking about America, mm -hmm. different indigenous tribes, different African populations, uh, being brought to different places, er, different other populations mixing in. So mm -hmm. hoodoo looks really different between one place and another place and another place and another place. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yet there's something in common. And whatever that is, that's hoodoo. That's the, the common body. Yeah. No. Oh, wow. So it's, it's a mixture of different cultures, a mixture of different... I, I mean, it's, to say that it's uh, like, people. it's definitely African, right? It's But it's not in... A, it's It's... It's an African source, but it's not in Africa, right? It's a, if you got to cook an African recipe, just just as you know, when they the slaves got brought over, they knew how to cook certain recipes, but they don't have that plant here. They don't have that animal here. So now we're going to make it with, you know, what the plant we have and the animal we have because we didn't have the same thing. So it's it's 
is the African mindsets blended together, many different African mindsets and pra practices blended together mm -hmm. and then sort of fed and sort of nourished in this very mixed marginal North American space. I, I, some people like to say it's American folk magic or American magic. And the reason I'm really making a very strong point to not say that is twofold. One, because it's distinctly African, period. That's the main mm -hmm. tone. As I said in our chats, like, is mm -hmm. African the way hip hop is African? Like, exactly. no, hip hop's not from Africa. No one would think that. But you can't be like, oh, no, hip hop's American music. Like, no, no, hip hop's black music. Like, that's, yeah. it is black American yeah. music. It's spread out, but that's where it came from, right? So, in that regard, it is distinctly so. But also, it is a counterculture. It was to say it is American magic ties it in with like the mainstream predominant American culture, which it has never been. And so mm -hmm. that's where I think it's important to make that distinction to be like, it's always been in the marginal spaces mm -hmm. that are kind of what America never called America, right? Exactly. So, yeah. so it's, 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 it's yeah. almost like anti-American folk magic in a, in a way. I don't want to yeah. say I something too big. I think, I, think it was, I think it was a revolutionized understanding of a practice, right? Yeah. Because anything that is created to go against colonialism, to go against, um, even the broader spectrum of Christianity, even though it has its root in Christianity, right? But, but it wasn't so much uh, Christianity versus um, the Old Testament, which right. a lot of the, the book of the understanding of Hudu comes from the Old Testament. Yeah, and Hudu so, is much yeah. more Old Testament focused and much yes. more um, you know much more focused on the liberation aspect. I mean, the, the Old Testament is, a, well, there's a whole book about people who were slaves who had to be free from the most powerful rulers in the world, right? So like that exactly. the message of the New Testament yeah. is a little different. Yeah. So would you, would you say in essence that hoodoo in a marginal understanding uses a lot of Jewish alchemy and Jewish tradition in its practice? So, at I would point. say in some regions of mm -hmm. and some practices of hoodoo, mm -hmm. yes, yes, because the Sephardic Jews, the Jews from Spain, who well, that's really where Kabbalah took root in Europe. It took root in two mm -hmm. places, but originally among the Sephardic Jews in Spain, mm -hmm. were considered by the Europeans to be black. I was just posting all these articles. The French, there was this whole thing where the French were like, it's a grievous mistake to call all the Jews black. Only mm -hmm. the Sephardic Jews are black. The other ones are mm -hmm. not. So because of segregation well, laws, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. means that living in certain areas, shopping at certain stores, interacting with certain people, then leads to interchange. So, yeah, there are certainly – definitely Hop and John is a great example, but many other – I have an article about a conjure man named Sonny Early who uh, killed a white man. Which was a pretty, pretty big deal in the 1800s. Go, kill the white man's – cow and then i think maybe killed the white man definitely killed his cow which was definitely might as well kill the man if he killed his cow right mm -hmm. yeah. um and the newspaper article describes him as having kabbalistic symbols on his coat mm. so yeah i can't say it was everywhere i can't say that well, all of hoodoo incorporates it because that's definitely not true there's definitely hoodoo that in no way touches on it or incorporates mm -hmm. it. um but there's definitely hoodoo that does well they, they use the, the do they use the, 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 the psalms? psalms? Yeah. So again, there's death. I know hoodoo that has nothing to do. There's, I mean, so as, as Cosmic told me when he was telling me what his grandfather told him, mm -hmm. he said, hoodoo is you at the crossroads mm -hmm. and there's four elements. It's God, the devil, the dead, and you. And so depending on your particular bent, your tradition, your family, whatever, like there's a lot of people who work with the devil in hoodoo. I don't want to say a lot of people. There's some people who work with the devil, just like Paula, right? Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, so those people probably don't work with the Psalms at all. Mm -hmm. I work with the Psalms, right? So for me personally, my family's worked with the Psalms, you know, in the Jewish tradition for over a thousand years for sure, probably longer. So yeah, when Willie started talking about, that was the other thing is when people start talking about like, you use this Psalm for this and this Psalm for this. And this is something my, I don't know, my dad's not American. My dad's from Iran. He's Jewish, but he's from Iran. Mm -hmm. So, like, he always has 
this with like everyone with with Jews with Gentiles whatever he's like fascinated by similarities in the culture so he's like really excited about these things so I grew up like that so then you yeah. start talking to people about like use this psalm for this use Psalm 114 for business be like you mm -hmm. use Psalm 114 for business too like that's such a random you know yeah. then you start looking into it and be like <laughs> most of it's the same and of course that that was originally from Jewish manuscripts mm -hmm. but n now there's a the question though of course there's the question of did it get to the hoodoo from there? Because we know it also got translated into French. It also got translated into German. And definitely, at least in Louisiana, a lot of the conjure doctors read and spoke French. So maybe they read the French, taking it from the Jewish source or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's not a straight, nothing in hoodoo is a straight line. It's mm -hmm. more like, you know, you put a drop in a pot and watch it disperse. And you can't, at some point, you can't tell the difference anymore. And that's usually how it goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what would be the step if somebody say, says, I'm interested in practicing mm. Hulu, what steps were you yeah. to make your, your opinion? I mean, I would, I would say step one is really like examine what your motivation is for that. It's a good start. Yeah. Your motivation. Yeah. Why, what do you want to get out of it? Why who do, why not? Is it when? And, and what is it that you think Hoodoo specifically has for you? You know, like, for me, it's weird because I kind of fell into it in mm -hmm. in the midst of things, right? And as I've fell in, fallen into a plenty of little bits and traditions here and there. But um, it's interesting when people now have an opinion or a, a perception of Hoodoo that's from maybe TikTok, maybe Instagram or whatever, and they – that's – that's why they want hoodoo because of the image or whatever the vibe that they get off the the influencer or whatever on social media and like i don't know that that, that they're going to get where they want to go so maybe first start with examining where you really want to go why hoodoo then the next thing everyone will say realistically you have to be in touch with your ancestors and i think with any path Path that we're talking about you got to be in touch with your ancestors and make sure your ancestors are cool with this path before you even make sure this path is cool with you and your ancestors your ancestors may be like we don't want you fucking around with that stuff and yeah i don't have to tell you guys it's not it's not gonna go well it's not gonna go well that's true um i think you know again like like you made that um that statement about you know do a drop of water and watch it disperse right um hollow in its essence became kind of that naturalized understanding as well you know even though you had many aspects but you had many bantu tribes or tribesmen or people from the, the bantu that were located in certain areas and certain regions that wound up coming in in the transatlantic slave trade via haiti going through cuba but see, now a lot of people they don't look at yeah. the at the timeline of, of how um, the the tr transgression of, of travel, you know. People also always, don't realize that, like, like you know, Louisiana is right across the Gulf of Mexico from Mexico, they from exactly. Caramaco. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, the, and and slaves were bought and sold like stocks, moving around, moving in the slave pens in the in Charleston, in the slave pens in Louisiana, mixed up, holding there, then go to another place. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're in Jamaica. Exactly. Yeah, so I think people don't don't understand that. And then, so then what happens is when you get this these first revolts that start happening on the island, you know, they mm -hmm. start escaping into new land. They're, they're, they're unfamiliar with the, with the geography, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, again, um, people don't realize that the indigenous culture um, for the Caribbean island was a paper genocide. There mm -hmm. was never there was never any proof of people millions and millions of dying. Yes, there were recorded history by by Spaniards writing, right? By Dutch, by this, by that. Yes, the we've killed off the extinction. We've, uh, you know, we we killed off um, um, the indigenous, yet it took almost a half a century for them to get up into the mountains with, by cutting and destroying land and eventually going up into the mountains. So by the time they got up there, there was people already 
mix. There was Maroons and yeah. there was indigenous people and there was who knows who who knows what was there, you know. Um, maybe even indentured servants that took off at that point, you know. And so this mixture of race and and this mixture of 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 um of this commonality of getting away from colonial strife is what creates this new world religion in 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 the Caribbean island, especially in Cuba, which is Palo, right? Yeah. Because Palo, people don't realize that Palo mm -hmm. is a new world understanding. You know, it may have old world graphics, but everything is new world. You know what I mean? Everything. And I well, imagine because it's a response to, way. yeah, it's a response to what happened here. And this is like, this is one thing we talk about. We're like, no, it is, it is distinctly like a a, a Black American um, faith or practice or tradition or whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it, because at every step of the way its development was a response to the black American experience. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and is, and, and this in that way, certainly not an American thing, right. Cause it's actually a response to or a counter to, and that comes exactly. from like, you know, plantation doctors through slavery, after slavery, it's, mm -hmm. there's a really good book by a guy named Cody Roberts called Voodoo and Power in New Orleans. He's a professor mm -hmm. at LSU and He's, 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 his whole thesis is that, like, the reason that, you know, they call it voodoo down there, but it's basically their flavor of hoodoo. Um, exactly. It's Catholic hoodoo, basically. Mm -hmm. um, the reason he, his thesis is that the reason that's so compelling is because it gives you power, which was what you needed in this country. And if you had power in any way, shape, or form, because, like, there's a lot of ugly shit, man. There were, there were freed slaves who had slaves who were conjurers like there's a, a number of those who were famous in new orleans and things exactly. and uh, it's it's about it's about power more than race in, in many ways at that time especially mm -hmm. in the in the french areas where they had like all the different tiers it wasn't just black and white like it was in the english areas um, yeah. uh eric touched on something that i mm. i always comment that is that the Native American and the Tainos or the indigenous population of the area where the Africans came for, from mm. don't get the credit. And what I'm trying to say is the Africans came, right? They were forced. They came to Cuba, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, United States. What did they bring with them? They brought nothing. I mean, they... they brought some amount of material a, culture we know man. that they brought some seeds they brought some roots they brought some okay. little things but for the most part no they had to work with what they found but, certainly a generation later right yeah, yes but i mean the way i see it is okay they were captured working in the fields and they were stripped taken bath put in the boat chained up came up here they didn't bring, yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't yeah. bring anything else right uh, they brought knowledge, but yet they came to a new world. They did not know mm -hmm. the flora. They did not know uh, the herbs. They did not know anything about this new land. And it was thanks to the Taino, right, in my opinion, thanks to the Taino, thanks to the Amer Native Americans who taught them that. So that's where I go back to saying, I, I myself believe it's a mixture of like it's a little bit of everything in there. But the way they they don't give credit I think that's, to those people. That's the problem. It's no. like it's not fair to say that it's not. You know, I, I, I first of all I agree with you. Second of all, I want to say that there is something to be said that I'm sure you've seen it. If you know any any like real bush doctor from anywhere, anyone who really knows plants, you can take them somewhere, and they they might have to bite a few things, taste a few things, try a few things, but they can kind of make things work with plants even for like medical conditions for because they know the taste they know the smell you know just like what i can work with you know if i don't have what i'm looking for i'll figure something out you know so i think there's some amount of that but there's no doubt that the, like there's a lot of plants that we use in hoodoo five finger grass um uh, five finger grass specifically is actually a great example deer's tongue is another great example but these are like used for the same thing in in the Native American systems of the areas since before any slaves got here. Yeah. We know that the that's five finger from. grass. The five finger grass. You're talking about crows, crows feet, right? Also, it's kind of the uh, skinny with the five it has fingers like, that come up. Yeah, yeah. They it looks call kind of it like a tiny, 
teeny tiny pot plant. Yeah. Exactly. It look we call it kimbansa. Okay. In Palo. In Palo, a lot of times mm -hmm. they use that for for um medicinal purposes when it comes to stomach issues. Mm -hmm. You know? And so um and it's and it's also made in um in ceremony when you're when you're going through ceremony and things like that. So it's a very it's a yeah. very interesting yeah. You know, like so. it smells kind of like yeah. vanilla. Is that the same so, plant? That you're yeah, thinking? yeah, like a little bit. For example, Eric can correct me if I'm wrong, right? Because I, I like to be corrected if I'm wrong. And part of this, the story about the first uh, part of Nganga that mm. they used a Taino because they wanted that spirit to continue them teaching the Congos about the flora, about the plants, mm. about the medicine, about the roots. Well, like I said, correct me if I'm wrong, right? But that's why they chose mm -hmm. that Kiyumba. Or if I'm speaking, no, speaking no, no, no. I think um, again, um, and and I'll um, I'll just expand on that a little bit. I think what happens is that when we get when we get to the subject of how medicine, right, Bilongo, Uru medicine, Mojo bags, there's this one common element that we all use, right, which is dirt, right? Yeah. That's the common element, yes. right? From whatever, the four corners, the top of the road, the bottom of the road, wherever. When it came to the, to the ancestral force that was put in, into an Nganga, quote unquote, the human bone, right? Or, or whatever human remain we found, um, people don't realize that, that the very first Ngangas were actual ancestral in nature in very much in in Palo was more of, of like that's an uncle that's an aunt that's a sister that's a brother versus what we have now in contemporary Palo that people just grab bones or from wherever they get it you know um legally or illegally <laughs> we won't even get into that subject because you know Human remains is not illegal to have in the United States. Mm -hmm. What's illegal is desecration of graves. Right. And I'm I'm mm -hmm. one that if I pay ten thousand dollars for a plot and you go and you dig up my uncle, I'm gonna whoop your ass. I mean that's just <laughs> you know <laughs> like that guy in Miami. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> again, um, but but that whole construct was was formulated from an indigenous understanding, mm -hmm. right? They took out the remains and they they created. That's what most ngangas represent. If people look at an nganga, it represents the formulation of a universe because that's an an, an indigenous and also the Congo cosmogram represents that indigenous understanding, mm -hmm. right? So both kind of like intertwine. Um, and I think um, again, like what happens is that. There may be similarities, but they're they're very different in 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 in, in its formulation. You know, I, I mean, between you're saying between yeah. the Hudu and Palo, I, 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 I think yeah, there's you got similarities. Yeah, but they're not the same. I, I they're, think they're, I, they're, they're, they're definitely they're, not they're the same. Oh, they're not they're, they're, the same. There's similarities. There's, there's there may be similarities. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, so I'll even say like. I know hoodoo workers who work what what we call would call a spiritual pot. It's not the same as mm -hmm. in Ganga. No, it's it's not. It's no. There are similarities. Similarities. There are certain technological. I think of it in terms of technologies. There's like we said, we use some of the same plants. We, exactly. we use some of the, but some like like vetiver. Mm -hmm. I we I I had Palero tell me that uh, she used vetiver to keep the cops away. Mm -hmm. We use vetiver to keep bad luck away, but it's still mm -hmm. it's keeping what you don't want away. Too much time exactly. Ago. So it's like, exactly. so, but why? Because in both cases, whoever came here and got their hands on vetiver noticed that it kept biting insects away, and so mm -hmm. they they, they can, you know they see the spirit of the plant. Like exactly. I think you you have like similar minds. It's like the idea of like you know what's it um, Newton Isaac Newton. And then another mathematician, Leibniz, discovered calculus in, like within a week of each other. They had mm -hmm. not talked at all. They hadn't read any of the same stuff. It's just like 
when minds have a certain amount of the same things to start with and you give them a certain amount of the same stuff, it's only going to be so different from each other, but that doesn't yeah. mean they're the same or that they influence each other. Yeah. And, and again, like, um, like, um, we, w there's a big influence in, 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 in the Congo or in, in the Congo practice when it comes to Palo, when it comes to like even maize, right. Using, using corn husk. It's like one of the major treaties or one of the major packs. Now, maize is relatively a Mesoamerican. Yeah, it doesn't grow in, in yeah, Central exactly. Africa. Yeah, exactly. So when you look at it and then you see the, the, the African component of why they use it, you, you totally, you totally add it up. It's, it's not, it's, the indigenous practice that taught them this and they embellished in it and used it because it was what we call belongable or medicine mm -hmm. and and Dude. all medicine can be good all medicine can be bad right it's the, it's the dose and the application exactly there was that quote about hoodoo that i wanted yeah. to read yeah that mm -hmm. i i think i put in that in the group who's mm -hmm. uh yeah is this beautiful because it, it's in both cases um, yeah is that hoodoo an african-american spiritual practice is as zora neale hurston has explained improvisational and flexible it adapts conforms borrows from the context it finds itself in contact with mm -hmm. rather than arriving cloaked in the power and authority of institution hoodoo ethnography seeks to commune with cultural contexts and recognize their power and value mm -hmm. right so this is this is exactly it is like that ethos is in common with Paolo and is in common with hoodoo exactly. but what those contexts that then shape them are is obviously different obviously different mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah definitely and i think i i the and the reason why um there has to be, be a clear distinction is because you have a lot of people that are that are going out there stating that that we're um Oh, what was it? What was the word? What was that? We don't know the tradition because we're not the right, right skin color. <laughs> sure. And well, if we, if no, we go there, they're, they're gonna start. No, I'm no, they're I'm saying fight. that. I'm saying right. that, and I'm being Bobby. very, and I'm very, I'm being very measured with my words because I'm not trying to create controversy. What I'm trying to do is 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 open an understanding, open an understanding that a lot of these practices have have jumped the gambit with melanin with different types of people indigenous cultures kabbalistic views because even in palo you look at palo you know the the symbol of the jewish star in palo is very prevalent yeah people don't people don't realize it you yes. know as above so below right and and that whole that whole yes. understanding right but also the congo cosmogram holds holds a an understanding of, of of force that talks about the continuum of the world from from inception of being born to adulthood to death to removing of the skin and coming into spirituality and incarnating whether that incarnation becomes um rooted in a rock in a dirt in a bug or in another person you know it's not, not so much reincarnation because reincarnation kind of formulates this whole understanding of you come back as a person. Mm. No, it the the specific tool of Congo practice or or the Congo philosophy is that we incarnate into everything that is part of the universe, right? And that also mean that you can reincarnate into a Hispanic or whatever. <laughs> Because a lot of people, a lot of people say that no, if you are a certain skin skin color, you reincarnate back. Into yeah, I don't, skin that color. I don't know. I, I haven't seen that happen yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm like, well, no, no. for according because I have <laughs> studied the Congo cosmology, and they believe that you reincarnate into mm -hmm. an animal, a pot, a tree. Right? But I'm not gonna start this because every time I touch this subject people start going crazy uh, the next question is this and I'm not gonna um, it, it's always a question 
question that, is, that says, uh, Tataka, you asked, right? And that's if they're homosexual, that's, can they practice uh, it? I, so we don't have like a central board or a council. There's no one to like revoke your hoodoo license or grant your hoodoo license for what I know, right? But the, I can speak as an anthropologist and say that definitely for sure we have records of homosexual and trans hoodoo practitioners as far back as we have record of hoodoo in America, definitely. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So I hope that answers that person's questions because that person, they, you know, they keep oh, okay. asking. Oh, asking I don't. I don't see any questions. I. I, I just. I don't. Yeah, my... I don't see any questions either. They don't show them to me, so who knows what they're yeah. saying? <laughs> they're, they're yeah. Comments. They're comments. But there are questions that um, some hmm. of my followers, because when it comes to Paulo, yeah, I tell them, look, there's some houses that do hmm. it. They accept you. Go for it. Don't, don't let nothing stop you. But unfortunately, in my hmm. Lineage, and I think again, again, what yes. what happens with that whole um, understanding? It it becomes it becomes more of an oral tradition that was passed down during a time when there was a very traumatic traumatic events happening. You know what I mean? And you can you can look back in history from from you know. Jamestown in, in Jamaica to certain plantations in Cuba, certain plantations in the Americas where, you know, destroying um, de destroying the black man and his family was key to suppressing him into being a slave, you know. It's unfortunate mm -hmm. that those things, things happen, but when, those, when those, those treaties, those understandings were made by those by those people back then, um, if, if they were alive in this day and age, who knows if, if they would say, "Oh, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna, en we're gonna end that." But again, we weren't there to create that. So who are we to break that? Right? I, I can't. You know, if I have to follow the tradition, I have to follow tradition, and I imagine that. I think that in most traditions, they're all a lot of them yeah. is man-made rules, right? Um, but Unfortunately, there's some traditions that we took an oath and we have to yeah. follow those rules. Um, so um, I'm not gonna, you know, they always like ask this questions. Can, if I'm this, can I practice that? I'm not gonna get into sure. it because then it creates controversy, right? So well, wait, there's, I don't wanna There's a way to subject. approach that subject a little different, that, maybe not the way it's intended, but I will say, I think it's true with any practice. Definitely true with hoodoo. It's not for yes. everybody. It's, if you guys are interested, we have Hudo Moses here. I don't know if sure. he wants to take yeah, personal questions later on. If you guys are interested in learning more about the practice, but I don't want well, to... Well, and I also want to say, say I, I, I can speak from my experience knowing what you might say, the Hudo members of the Hudo Man fraternity, just mm -hmm. Hudo workers, because to a with exceptions, because there's no uniformity in Hoodoo. Zora Neale Hurston said Hoodoo is not a monolith, right? Exactly. Ishmael Reed said Hoodoo is eclectic. So there's no there's no consistency. But exactly. much of Hoodoo is solitary and always has been. And so how does someone qualify? In the old legends say you got to go down to the crossroads again and again until the devil shows up, and then you got to trick him to give you his power. Now, what does that mean mm -hmm. for you? How do you go about doing that? There's some... Some people talk about stealing the lightning. I think that's a phrase I used before. You know, you got to go down to the crossroads and steal the lightning. How do you do it? Well, if I told you how to do it, then well, you definitely can't do it. Funny, that's for sure. All, you, that's the sort of thing you figure out. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I'm always at the crossroads, and so far nobody yeah. has taken my power. So. I mean, you know, look, uh, I, I think I think it's it's a it's a beautiful tradition that is that is, that has to be respected. I think there's a lot of misinformation that's going on mm. nowadays because I think um, people are commercializing it, right? So like you get, you get. Um, I see a lot of your products, right? Mm -hmm. You do a lot of um, voodoo magic works, but you also have your. Yeah, I don't. Saint I don't even work. consider any of my stuff. Like, I don't really sell. Who I do voodoo work. You can hire me to do voodoo work. So yeah, I yeah. Sell what I make. No, know? I I know I know, but some people. Or or yeah. some new um, people that are that are brandishing their stuff as hoodoo, right? Um, right. Are, are are I think 
think are mismarketing this stuff, you know what I mean? And they're getting people to believe that their products are either hoodoo based or, or, you know, there's this whole flavor of nuance, new age type. Well, of. There's, there's a weird, there's a lot of weird stuff. Cause even like when I came into it, yeah. it was like real hoodoo hoodoo, like talking to Willie, who I, the, the old man who I first learned hoodoo from, yeah. Willie never heard of Aubrey Camino in his life. Never used Aubrey Camino in anything, never heard of Aubrey Camino. That wouldn't mean anything. Willie didn't speak any Spanish. Yeah. Willie barely spoke, you know, standard English. So, nonetheless, by the time I really started working, yeah. I put Aubrey Camino in just about everything. It's it, a road opener, yeah. What, what yeah. doesn't need a little bit? Even if I'm doing a cleansing or an exorcism, mm -hmm. let me open that a little bit for that to run out through, you know? Like, of course, yeah, you yeah. Know, let me open that up a little bit. So, exactly. but, and, and, so this, I, there's some, but the more, other thing was, all of a sudden, now the shops have Aubrey Camino. The hoodoo shops have Aubrey Camino. So, and like, what's the chicken or the egg? How did, did, did they start stocking it because people wanted it? Or did people start using it because that was in the, I don't know. I, like, I, it's, it's this weird thing. But to your point, right, mm -hmm. now it gets to people, I don't know if it's the commercial, it's a mix of, I feel like, commercialism. And mm -hmm. then you have social media where you have to use hashtags. Right, so you need one word to describe it. Yeah, I can't say, you know, I have to call this hashtag hoodoo. Yeah, right. That's how. That's my buzzword to get in front of the people, and it's an aesthetic now, especially on Instagram where everything's it's, visual. Hoodoo exactly. is an aesthetic, and this other thing is Palo is another aesthetic exactly. or whatever. And like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's. Um, that's, that's why. I, that's I said, that's hey, the first thing is to figure out why you want it, because if it's just the aesthetic, yeah. like. It is. It's, it's, Nowadays is hashtag voodoo, hashtag yeah, 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 voodoo, yeah, yeah, yeah. hashtag oh, palo, <laughs> hashtag, hashtag Santa Muerte, hashtag your mama, what, your papa, hashtag everything. What, I, what I've so, noticed, what I've anyways, noticed, and this is not to dig into some person. I'm not going to get into that. But I will say that I've seen people who are hoodoo mm -hmm. hashtagging palo, hashtagging voodoo, hashtag tagging a word we use to describe um, Mother Nature as malongo. And, but they're all, their, all their premise is hoodoo. So it's confusing because when a person goes to look at their, when they go look at that content, you go, okay, where is that word malongo coming from? And why would you use it in a, and again, and this is not gatekeeping, right? This is just if we're trying to get an audience to to brandish whatever who do we do right who do we do ha. <laughs> <laughs> whatever hoodoo is is being um performed whatever workings and and I'm a hoodoo priest why would I have to embellish this whole understanding of of nature as malongo when all I have to do is just yeah. use in the context that people understand hashtag nature yeah. you know yeah. hashtag yeah, 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 yeah. mother earth hashtag you know whatever hoodoo um practitioners give name to nature in itself what whatever cue names you know and, and yeah, i yeah. think um that becomes confusing it's de definitely confusing okay. well, guys okay. i have three minutes left because they, okay. they cut the video and i want to save okay. it I don't know if you guys want to agree to... Uh, yeah, let me go get my pipe two. and we can do part two. This is like an hour without smoking. It's a lot for me. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> hey, we'll okay. I, I really yeah, we'll that. definitely do a part I two. I think, you know, I think hopefully, you know, it, it'll, it'll open up dialogue for different people, you know, and different understandings. And, and, and understand that no one is trying to dismay anything. We're just trying to get accurate information from, from all sides of the spectrum. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, to not sell it short either yeah. that's that's one thing that we've talked about and i know we're going to like wrap on this exactly. is that part of the narrative that we're all trying to deprogram is that oh here come look at these stupid slaves that didn't talk couldn't communicate with anyone and couldn't learn from anyone exactly. just had what they brought with them that's not the truth these were ingenious people these were brilliant yeah. people who interacted socialized married had kids started families mm -hmm. like and and helped each other and helped each yeah. other against yeah. the common thread. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So let's work. 
th thank you everybody for being here. Unfortunately, after an hour, I don't know why Instagram doesn't like me and it cuts <laughs> my videos. Um, we'll try to set up a part two. And like I said, it's Eric, thank oh, yeah. you. I know you're staying up late. Oh, Udo Moses, right. thank you for being here. But I think there's more to give people and talk. And I know it takes some of your time away. But we are here to give you a little bit of knowledge, even though we're talking here, here, but it's educating you guys. And thank you all the followers for being here on both uh, Eric's followers and Huru Moses. Uh, yep. Hopefully we could plan another definitely, one. Definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah. Willing to. But there's a lot more, more information. Yeah. I'm not saying secrets, but information. Uh, it's, it's good because we are coming together yeah. as a spiritual yeah. community. And I got I to gotta talk with Moses separate yes. from all this about about some stuff I want to kick you with. So. I got to mail you some stuff too. So, <laughs> so we definitely got to connect. Yeah, I've been we, waiting for that two years. Uh, Forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I took Cosmic two years. Maybe, and hey, 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 hey at least, at least you're, you didn't blow yourself up this time. That's it. That's I said that's one of three ways that we're allowed to go. That one's off the list for me. It's not going to be. That, it's not going to be by that. Okay. All right, brother. Well, you guys right. have a good God night, bless. right? Bye. 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 Bye.